So spring is upon us and one of the best baits to be thrown in the spring is a drop shot. And so in today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down an in-depth view on my three drop shot worms and how I rig them for the specific situations you're gonna be throwing them. I break it all down so you know exactly what to rig for the situation you come across to help catch you more fish. So stick around, you guys are not gonna wanna miss this video. At the end of this video, I'll even break down my two drop shot combos and when I throw them so that way you guys can have the exact same gear that I throw or know how to relate it to the gear that you're throwing. All right, so we have our drop shot worms laid out. The first one is going to be a Yamamoto Senko. Obviously, that's going to have to be in the playlist because it's just a phenomenal bait. The next of which is a Z-Man SMH worm. It's just a great Elaztec worm that I use in all different situations, but it's not my overall best worm I would throw, but it's my go-to because it holds up the absolute best and it fishes really, really well in most scenarios. The last worm I want to talk about is going to be a robo worm. It's just a nice hand poured worm that you really, it's hard to beat that finesse worm when you're fishing around spotted bass, small mouth, large mouth. It just has a great fall and a great just triggering action to it because it sinks a little bit more and you get a lot of action out of it. So those are going to be the three worms that I'm going to talk about. So for this video purpose, what we're going to have is we're going to have two different hooks. We're going to have a Trocar TK150, which is like a nose hook. And then we're going to have a more, a light wire worm hook, which is a Trocar again, just, I can't remember the exact model number, but it's a Trocar light wire worm hook. I will have all of it linked down below as always. But as you can see, two different styles right here. And so what we will start with first is we will start with the Yamamoto Senko because it's probably, probably everybody's go-to, not necessarily drop shot worm, but I'll break down why I think it should be a drop shot worm you should be reaching for most often. So if I'm going to throw a drop shot with a Senko, I don't really ever go to the light wire worm hook. If I am throwing a Senko, it is because I see fish on a specific piece of cover or I'm trying to fish a specific object or around a specific object. That could be something like a dock. That could be something like a boulder, a stump. It's something where I generally have one fish positioned on where I'm really trying to catch it. And so with that, I'm always going to go with the Trocar TK150 and I'm going to wacky rig it. And a lot of people forget that a wacky rig can be used at depth too. So if you're fishing boulders, you're fishing, you know, offshore hard spots, you're fishing a stump field where you know those fish are setting up, you have fry garters on there. What I will do is I will go to a downsized lead weight, usually in like an eighth ounce or a sixteenth ounce. This is a little bit bigger, but I will go to that size because what that's going to give me is that's going to give me the option to get that drop shot down there with that wacky rig on there because then you get that nice wacky rig fall, especially if you really increase your leader size. So if I go to a lot longer leader, now I can get that whole fall rate down there and just sit there and hold it and flutter it in that fish's face. But that's a really, really deadly technique when those fish are post-spawn or pre-spawn setting up on specific pieces of cover. The next worm we're going to talk about is the overall go-to, which is going to be the SMH worm. So the reason why I like the SMH worm is specifically because it has pretty much the best of all actions but it's not specifically great at one thing other than I can catch about 800,000 fish on it compared to one robo worm. If I get one bite on a robo worm, I'm probably going to lose it versus I can get literally like 65 bites on this worm and be okay with it. For this one, I will show you the exact ways which I kind of rig a Nico or um, I will show you the exact ways in which I actually rig a drop shot worm. The first of which is going to be nose hook. And so if you can see, generally when you nose hook it, you can just rig it right through the nose like so. That's one option, and I'm going to use that option when I'm kind of around nothing, when I'm throwing it on a hard spot offshore, when I know there's nothing that I'm specifically going to get hung up on, if I'm dragging it around boulders for smallmouth, etc., you know, because that way I get the most action out of this worm, and I get the easiest hookup penetration because that hook is exposed. That's really, really important because a lot of times we're throwing light gear on this, and so I really want to have the highest hookup percentage. What you can do to still get the same action out of this worm and to keep it a little bit weedless is you can actually, instead of rigging it like that, what you can do is you can actually come in behind the nose a little bit, just like so, and bring it forward. Keeping the hook actually in the tip of the worm like that, and then you still get that nose hook. You just have to be aware that when you set the hook, you might have to set the hook a little bit harder to actually penetrate that plastic right there. But what that's going to do is that's going to keep you a little bit more weedless. And that way, if you're fishing around grass or if you're fishing around a stump and you're kind of nervous that you're going to get hung up on it, this is a good way that you can actually avoid getting stuck on that like that. 
Now, a couple other ways that you can rig a drop shot worm like this SMH worm is one way is you can Texas rig it with this light wire finesse, um, this light wire worm hook. And that's just basically your simple, you know, Texas rig, bring it through, come back, push it through, line it up, bam, Texas rig, right? That's a great option. Keeps you really, really weedless when you're in grass, when you're around brush piles specifically. This is pretty much what I go to. 80% of the time if I'm largemouth fishing with a drop shot just because I'm always fishing around some kind of cover And so when I'm fishing like this I can actually get it through all of the weeds and all of the crap that I'm fishing around without getting hung up And that's why I specifically like to go to this SMH worm because it's so much a last tech in there Even after that hook pokes through you can really just pop it back in and that channels still there But that hook points not going to pop through really really easy like it would on some other types of worms and so that's why I rig that. There is a reason that I like this trocar hook though, because it has a triangle blade nose on it and a bigger barb. It actually penetrates the plastic easier and it actually gets into that fish's jaw. And when I hook a fish on this drop shot hook, I generally have to break out the pliers. They generally have it all the way in their throat and that hook is completely buried up to the bend and it takes forever to get that hook out. But I can almost promise you every time I set the hook on this, it's coming to the house. That's kind of the only situation in which I will actually break out this worm hook. Another way that I like to rig this is there's two different ways. You can actually rig it just behind the nose like this, because what that's going to do is that's going to make this bait dance in a circle. It will actually dart, which is something that's really, really cool. So if again, if you're fishing around a specific rock pile, a specific stump, you can hook it like this and that worm will get a lot of different action. It'll get a lot of different darting action to it. And so that'll kind of give those fish a different look. And then again, the other way you can do it is obviously just wacky rig it like so. Now, the reason that I don't like the SMH worm all of the time is because it's a Laztec, it has a tendency to float. And so you don't get the same fall rate out of this bait that you do out of a robo worm, which that can play in a lot of specific situations. It doesn't affect me as much when I'm fishing a brush pile. Because generally, when I drop it down into that brush pile, as soon as you're in there shaking it, you're trying to keep it up off the bottom, and you're just shaking it in those fish's face, and it doesn't really affect me as much. But if I am fishing for spotted bass, they're being really finicky, and I'm trying to drop it on specific fish, where when I drop it and I want that nice fall rate, that's when I'm going to go to a robo worm, because you're just going to get a lot better action. And I also go to the robo worm when fish are just being generally finicky and as a whole, when those fish are really wanting to test that bait, when those fish are really wanting to check it out, I just have more salt content in here, which is going to give those fish a little bit more scent to kind of hold on to. And you're just going to get a little bit more motion out of that bait. Granted, you're going to go through a lot more of these baits than you will these ones. But these ones are just going to be something that you can break out of the box when you know your fish are there. Like this is kind of my practice bait when I know those fish are going to eat it. But then when things get tough, that's when I have a box of these in the boat. I usually carry it in a morning dawn and then also in this bait fish color, specifically if I'm fishing clear water, you know, small mouth, I'll even keep it in a green pumpkin, um, a bold bluegill color if I'm fishing around largemouth and grass, but it is probably hands down my favorite drop shot worm. I've probably caught more fish on this one than I have any other one on a drop shot, but this one is one that I usually do most of the heavy lifting with just because it can take the brunt of it. One thing I do want to talk about is when do you go from lead to tungsten or tungsten to lead? Well, if you're a northern guy, I pretty much always throw tungsten. Because you're trying to find hard spots so much more frequently, you're really trying to look for all those areas where there's gravel in the grass, where there's rocky, spat, rocky spots, etc. I really like that tungsten because I can feel a whole lot better versus lead is a little bit softer and you don't feel it as much. But if you're in a position where you know you're going to lose a lot of weights, I will go to lead just because if I know where the spot's at, you know, with all the electronics nowadays, you can see everything. That lead will allow you to be a little bit easier on your wallet. It will also, with a cylinder weight like this, go through grass a lot easier. So if you're just flipping a grass edge, sometimes that can be beneficial to having just this lead weight in there. But if I'm fishing deep water, I will 100% go to tungsten. Fish USA has some great deals on their new tungsten weights they just came out with. I'll have those linked down below as always. But what this does is it ha helps me have a compact profile and sink to the bottom a lot faster as opposed to a lead weight, I have to have a lot bigger weight. And if you'll notice on this drop shot weight, I actually opened the eye of it up and tied my tungsten weight to it with a garbage clinch knot. 
the best way to put it. Instead of doing seven turns and improve clinch knot, I do like a four turn clinch knot where I know it'll break here before it actually breaks it. My drop shot knot. So that way it's kind of a fail safe, but those fish don't shake it off whenever they're flopping around in the air. Those smallmouth don't just throw it after your first fish. So that's what I do with that. But I do like to keep tungsten and I do like to keep lead. Because if I'm fishing around wood, I'm going to go to lead. If I'm fishing around something where I think I'm going to lose a lot of weights, I'll go lead. But if I want to get deep or if I'm fishing for specific hard spots or if I don't have great electronics with me and I'm bank fishing, I will go tungsten a little bit because it will help me feel the bottom a little better. As far as my drop shot combos goes, for most of you guys, everybody pretty much knows I run a Cortland Master Braid to a Cortland Leader. That's kind of my go-to setup. Whatever braid you like to run, I just like Cortland in eight pound because you wouldn't think two pounds of diameter difference would really make a big difference. But when you go from eight pound to 10 pound, 10 pound feels like rope. And that eight pound casts a lot better. And the biggest key is it actually doesn't get caught in the wind as much because it's so thin, it cuts the wind. And I throw it in purple, but I'm special. So I'm the only one that gets purple and Alton Jones Jr. But yellow is also a great option. High vis is a great option. But then that leaders, if I'm fishing around cover, I like to go to more of their Abrazex, that XTR leader, because it's a little bit thicker. But then they also have some other leader materials that I'll link down below, where if I'm smallmouth fishing around nothing, I will go to that because it's a thinner diameter. And unlike most fishing line, when you kink it and you straighten it back out, there'll be kinks in the line. These leaders, you actually won't have that. You could tie it up in a ball and then straighten it back out and it is perfectly straight. So the strength of it is absolutely phenomenal, which is why I run it. But the combos that I run, I like to run two specific combos. If I am what they say video game fishing, which really doesn't happen much anymore, right? How often do we do it? We don't. Uh, a lot of times if I'm deep drop shotting where, you know, I'm making short pitches, I like to go to a 610 arc invoker tour series and then if i'm casting fishing brush piles i will go to a 7-1 arc invoker tour series and i run that all on that new arc g5 spinning reel with the braid and the floral combo that we just listed below or listed right here but those two kind of give me some options that 610 i like it because i'm going to be fishing it more with an exposed hook lighter line it's shorter because i'm making shorter pitches that kind of deal. So I'm really not reliant on the power of the rod necessarily. But if I'm fishing around brush, I like that 7-1 medium heavy because it just gives me a little bit more punch when I'm throwing that light wire finesse hook where I'm Texas rigging it. And I really have to get a punch in those fish and try to get them out of that brush as soon as I hook them. So that's why I like to run that specific combo for that. But those are the rods and the reels that I like. Those are the baits. Hopefully that helps you guys understand drop shot fishing a little bit more and understand how to rig a drop shot a little bit better. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this content and you like today's video, hit that subscribe button to follow along. But God bless every single one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.